Back on game day scoreboard, it is never a straight line between the Chargers and victory. And again, they take the less traveled route to this one. <laughs> two and two on the season, 24-17, your final. But that really only tells a bit of the story. Again, fourth and short, going for it, backed up against their own goal line in the fourth quarter. They don't get it. Vegas gets a chance, a timely interception by Asante Samuel Jr. on the other side, all but ices it for L.A. Again, some questions in coaching and an execution as well. They saw a 24-7 lead shrink to 24-17 with a tie knocking on the door. But they don't ask how, just how many. And the Chargers got their second win of the season. Back in studio with NFL analyst Ryan Wilson. Uh, where to begin? Uh, the coaching, the execution, the quarterback with nine fingers. Let's touch upon it all. <laughs> Let's start with the coaching. Because for the second consecutive week, backed up on their own end, fourth down in the fourth quarter with a touchdown lead. Brandon Staley and that money ball he likes to run wants to go for it. Do you co-sign these types of decisions? I, I think they're beyond me from an analytic standpoint, but situation chart says punt there, no? You would think so. So a week ago against the Vikings, they're up four with a minute 51 to go. They go for it from their own 24, fourth and one. Don't get it. Same time, uh, same thing this time around, up seven. Uh, they go for it about 335 to go, up seven. Don't get it. And the, the issue for me, I don't care about going for it necessarily, Joe, because you only have a yard to go. Mm -hmm. You should be able to get a yard. And both instances, it worked out. Was it exactly how Brandon said they planned it? No. Both times, Kirk Cousins threw a, an interception in the end zone, and we saw Aiden O'Connell throw an interception close to the end zone to wrap up both games. I understand it on some level, mm -hmm. but uh, the end result didn't exactly go like Brandon Staley drew it up in the sand. It almost feels like he drew up in the sand because this team could very easily still be winless. It, the pass defense heading into week four did rank 31st in the NFL, so maybe it's Brandon Staley hedging that side, but in the end, it's the pass defense that bails Brandon Staley and that decision out in this situation. What's keeping the Chargers from the win that we expect? The you're the better team, just go blow them out. It looked like we were headed that direction here against Las Vegas, and again, it becomes a ball game. What's preventing that? And by the way, you have Khalil Mack, who got six sacks in this game. Career day, and that's saying something. You and know? you're still in the position where you're battling in the final minutes against a really bad Vegas team without their starting quarterback, having to rely on a rookie day three pick in Aiden O'Connell. And I think what happens is, and this is a, a recurring theme, and this is why we call it Chargers. The Chargers come out red hot. <laughs> they build a lead that feels insurmountable by the time you go into halftime, and then the wheels fall off. Uh, so you wonder about second half adjustments. You wonder about uh, being complacent when the other team decides to just put their foot on the gas and not being able to finish plays. And Joe, it always feels like it's something. This week, we saw Justin Herbert throw an interception, try to make a tackle against Max Crosby, get his finger jacked up. He came out looking like Ever Scissor Hands with the way his hand was wrapped up. Threw a great pass to end the game to Josh Palmer, but it required a third and 10 deep ball that probably had a 25% chance of, of, of being completed, and they pulled it off. So it's every week something different. This isn't how you win playoff games. We saw how their playoff game went last year against yeah. the Jaguars, of course. So I don't know how you fix it, if there's a quick fix. But, hey, man, Brandon Staley's 2-0 in the last two weeks. Yeah, thankfully, uh, some time to sharpen it up before playoff time does roll around. But these are the type of efforts that end seasons when you don't have the luxury that they did in this situation. 13-24, buck 67, one touchdown, one interception. By no means a career day here for Justin Herbert. But doesn't feel like this is a man... Who needs to grow all that much in his ability as a quarterback? But you were talking to me a little bit during this game about his growth as a leader in that quarterback position. I think we saw some of that in the fourth quarter again here. What can you tell us about the development of that aspect of Justin Herbert? Right, because you remember coming out of Oregon, there were a lot of questions about he grew up in Oregon. He's never been outside of the state for any uh, extended period of time. He moved to California close by, good enough. But he made the leap from his senior year at Oregon, which there were a lot of questions about him in that offense. And it turned turned out it was the offense. It wasn't Justin Herbert. He's taken that next step, and the Chargers certainly have to be excited about that. Let's take a look at some of the numbers coming out of this one. Fantasy impact. Big names. Not the big production you're often looking for. Was by far the most productive day of Josh Jacobs' year thus far. 27 fantasy points. Lion's share of that. Coming in the passing game. Did get to the end zone for a rushing touchdown. His first of the season, Justin Herbert, 24 points at the top of your lineup. Keenan Allen, Devontae Adams living in the teens, both on single-digit receptions, double-digit targets there for Adams. 
Let's get you back out to LA where Trent Green is stopping by for his thoughts on another wild Chargers game. I mean, stop me if you've heard it before, Trent. This team doesn't know how to play a normal game. Again, backed up against their own goal line, going for it on fourth down. There's always something. What's keeping the Chargers from when they do smell the blood in the water, getting that blowout win that you're looking for against, albeit a lesser opponent here? Well, here's the thing. I don't think the Chargers care. They just want to find a way to win a game. And I know there's been a lot made about the close games that they've had going back to last year and then carrying over this season, the first two weeks of the season. And really the last two weeks, uh, all their games have been by a touchdown or less. And, and you know, when we talk to them about that and the numbers, they they they, they really don't care. They're, they just want to find a way to win. And, you know, you consider they had a 17-point lead in this game and they had a 14-point lead coming into the second half. I thought the Raiders defensively played a lot better in the second half and put them in put themselves into position and, and put their team in position to try and come away with a win it just uh, you know it wasn't a fantasy numbers type of game mm -hmm. like we see from Justin Herbert like we've seen from from Keenan Allen a week ago uh, but they're fine they're, they're fine just being efficient and, and finding ways to win games at least that's what they shared with us in meetings this week yeah there are ways to execute outside of the box score and I think we saw a lot of that out of Justin Herbert what did you observe in his play? Some of those things that maybe the box score can't capture. Well, you're, you're talking about a guy that, you know, came into this game 74% complete a week ago at 85% completion today, just over 50%. Uh, that wasn't what was the, the, the game was called for. And and they ran the ball more, more than more like what they did in week one against Miami, not like they did in week two and three. Uh, it, you know, it was just a productive day. They were able to get it done. The second half, they didn't do anything. They didn't score any points in the second half. But I thought Justin Herbert showed a new level of toughness. Not that there was any question about his toughness to begin with, but when that finger got stuck in Max Crosby's mm -hmm. face mask and he went under the tent and then he comes out with that giant contraption on his <laughs> hand, the fact that he was able to stay in there and finish the game and execute the way that he did and ultimately came up with the big pass down the sideline to Joshua Palmer to secure this game says a lot about the toughness, about the way the guys on his team will think about him uh, moving forward and the type of leader that he's going to be. Yeah, they had to dig to the bottom of a trainer's bag for that old school finger splint that we saw on Herbert, a, a gutsy performance no doubt we know what the carrot dangling in front of Herbert and this team is the one they have not been able to capture or at least not often enough and that's playoff football what needs to change what are the coaching points for this team to see their final form and execute at a playoff type level well, I think it's winning the close games, and that's what they've done the last two weeks. Of course, we all know the playoff game a year ago. We know what happened in week one and two, not able to get it done, losing it overtime week two to the Titans, and then the last two weeks coming up big, and, and it was uh, critical fourth down decisions. Both times they went for it. Both times they didn't get it, and then their defense came out and held and were able to, to stop the other team from getting into the end zone. So winning those close, close games, guys, teams, players, you have to learn how to finish games, and they've done that the last couple of weeks, and then you can't say enough about Khalil Mack and the defense, mm. the fact that he had a record-setting day with, with six sacks. And, and when the defense knows they've got a rookie quarterback and they're able to get pressure and they kind of kept everything in front and forced him to throw everything underneath, uh, I thought it was a, a well-executed plan. And, and ultimately, they were able to finish it off at the end. That's our guy Trent Green playing through some crowd noise of his own. Trent, we appreciate you as always. <laughs> All right, thank you. And don't forget, this season, it's your team with ours. You can stream your action, CBS Sports, live on the Paramount Plus app. Get it in your pocket. Get it on your tablet. Get it on your TV. It's your team wherever you go. Download, subscribe, and enjoy on Paramount Plus.